G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to go over the custom filament changes I've done to the RFID app. Um, I've made the app now installable on any phone, whether it's got NFC or not. So if you don't have NFC, the RFID side of the app won't work, but the custom filament side will. Um, if you've got NFC and your device supports my fair tags, then it's going to both both sides of the app will work. So the main part of this video is the addition of custom filaments. So I've got a couple of icons up here. So you've just got add, edit, delete, and upload to printer. All three printers are supported for this. So make sure you select the right printer that you're working with because the printers are slightly different. So if you're working with a K1, select the K1, K2, or a high. It doesn't matter if it's a K1C or a K1 Max, it's a K1. Um, so in this we'll just select K2. This is important that you select the right printer to start with. So here we're going to find a filament to use as a base template to work from. So I'm just going to go to generic and I'm going to say select a PETG. So select a generic PETG and now I'm going to click the add button. And this is going to use those settings as the template. Now the main parts in here you're going to be looking at is just the brand, the name and the material type. So the brand, I'm just going to use Color Dream because I've got that. And then we're just going to say the name. It'll be, say, Color PTG. And then the material type. So this is just PTG. And that's pretty much all you need. You can mess around with the minimum and maximum temps there. If it's soluble or support, you can change those values. But really, for this one, we're just going to change those three values and hit Add. So now at this point, we can go down and fire Color Dream. And now we've got that. Now, if you want to refine the filament's parameters even further in the printer, um, you click on the Edit button. And this will bring up all of the uh, parameters of the filament that the printer uses. So you can edit these how you like. Just be careful because you obviously if you edit something wrong it may cause issues with the printer. But we'll just leave everything default. And now we've got that filament added. So if I had that as a brand I could set this up. I could select the colour and then program an RFID tag. Stick it on the side of the spool and that spool would be tagged. But the printer won't recognise it yet because you need to upload what your changes here to the printer. So now to upload those changes to the printer, you can click this Upload button. And what you need to do here is you need to have root access enabled on the printer, and you need the printer to be connected to the same network as your phone. And you need the IP address of the printer here. So once you know the IP address of the printer, you put that there. This should be the default password unless you've changed it. But this is the SSH password, so if you've changed it, put the correct password in. If not, you should just be able to leave this how it is. Now these options here, prevent DB updates. So the printers uh, update the database in the background without you knowing. So as soon as you connect the printer to the internet or you power it on, it'll check for an update. This check should prevent the printer updating by putting the version number to such a high version that the printer won't try and override it but it's purely, it may change in the future, I don't know. Reboot printer. The, to apply the database changes to the printer, it has to be rebooted. It's not going to read the database again until it reboots. So if you're just experimenting and you're just looking at changes in the file system or whatever, you can turn this off. But if you want to apply the changes on upload, then you need to leave that um, ticked. Now just quickly here, reset printer database. Now if you tick this, this is going to change some options. So this will restore the printer's database back to the original one that was in there before you made changes. Reset app database, that'll wipe out the app database and restore the app's database back to the default. So just keep in mind, if you tick those, you can reset everything and remove the changes that you're about to do. But we'll untick this and we'll go back to here. So at this point, the printer's got root access enabled, we've got the right IP, we've got the password. All we need to do now is click Upload. Once it says Upload is successful, the printer's going to be rebooting. 
So once you've waited for it to reboot, um, you'll see the changes in the printer itself. Okay, so now the printer's rebooted. We can come to the filaments and we just have a look. So it's all gone blank. Then we've got Creality, Generic, eSun, and now we've got Color Dream now, which was the one that I sent. So we've got the types, PETG, and then the label I gave it, which was Color PETG. So that's all there. That's the filament I created in the app and sent to the printer. So now we'll just go back out. Now we use the RFID tag. We'll program it with those same settings. Okay, so I have the same settings on my phone here. I've got Color Dream, Color PETG. We'll just set the color, maybe purple. Then we'll put the tag on. Then we'll write the tag. So now that's on the tag. Now we've done that, we can come and use the RFID tag here and just tap it on the side. And now it comes up here. And there you go, we've got Color Dream, we've got PETG and Color PETG, and that's off the RFID tag. So that's the RFID working with the custom filaments. Same works on the K1 with the upgrade kit and it works on the high. And just back to the app again, we'll just look at delete. So now we've got the delete button here, so um, I'm going to delete that filament that I just added, which is Color Dream and all of that. So we just click delete, that's going to prompt to delete it, and now it's gone. So you'll see it's just back to the original filaments that were there. So that's pretty much all of the functions that I added. You can update the database from the printer. So with this you can see the database that's installed here. Um, is the 1.7 version. Now if I go check, that's going to try and download the one from the printer which has the high version because I haven't reset the printer. But we'll just go back. And we'll have a look at resetting the printer. So now we'll go reset the printer database. And we don't need to reset the app database because I just deleted the filament. So we'll reset the printer anyway. And this is going to wipe out any changes that I did and return it back to default. So now this will reboot the printer automatically. You don't need to have an option for this. It's just going to do it. We'll, now we'll just wait for the printer to reboot and we'll check the database again, the update. So we'll come back here. Okay, now the printer's rebooted. We'll just check the database. And you can see it's the original one back there again. So it doesn't have the high number. No update available. So that's pretty much the functions that have been added to the app which will allow you to uh, add custom generic filaments into the K-series printers or the high, and then tag them if you've got NFC-enabled device. If not, um, you, you'll be able to modify the printer databases. You just won't be able to do the RFID part of it. Obviously, there may be bugs still, but I'll work them out as I go. Anyway, I hope that helps with um, understanding some of the changes that I've done to the app.